Uh, there's nights where I come home, I am tired. But I stay late at night, you know, after our shift is over with, until the next shift comes in. You got your jacks around, Charlie? Mm -hmm. All of them? Yeah. Are you kidding? Judy Cobb is one of America's 3,000 women miners. 23 and single, she's been working at the coalface for two years. You get in a tight place, you get hot and sweaty, it drains a lot out of you, uh, you know. But as far as, uh, you know, it being a real hard job, it's not. Judy's one of eight women who work at the Harris Drift Mine in West Virginia. The mine's been employing women for eight years. The shear goes back and forth across the face line, which is, I think it's 580 foot long. And it goes back and forth across. And it, we, like I said, we run our jacks up and push the face line over up against the coal face. And then the shear will come by and they'll take a cut of coal, which is a about as wide as the ripper head on the piece of machinery. come by and we push them one at a time as we come through and there's 119 jacks on the line which is across the face line there's 119 jacks so as we get those 119 jacks pushed up against you know get them all run up to the face line and push it back out the shear is ready to come back and take another cut of coal it's just a continuous operation you know back and forth back and forth woman to work down the mine was Dorothy Keene, a 50-year-old grandmother. Uh, well, 73, really, women start going in the mines, but not that many of them around here. And uh, I found out that, and I decided I'd go put my application in, so I went over to Eastern and put it in. And they didn't have any of their quota of women because they didn't have any women working. So I said, well, I'll just take a chance and, you know, put it in. If they call me, they do. If they don't, they don't. So I put it in, and two days later, they called and wanted to know if I wanted a job. My family didn't know what to think when I called and told them, because I didn't want to tell them right away, because I wasn't sure whether I'd like it enough to stay or not. Mom said, well, I know you. You'll try anything. So uh, I went ahead, and they were all scared about me going in there, really, because there'd been no women in there, and they knew the sentiments of the coal miners. I mean, really, the older men right now still feel the same way. Older miners, you know, start organizing and all this and that when they had to go in there with guns and ball bats and everything else. And uh, my two daughters, they were a little bit leery about it, but they like it now. And uh, my grandkids are just ecstatic, really. They think it's nothing like having a grandma that works the coal mine. The first women to become miners in modern America went underground 10 years ago. But discrimination by the mining companies kept out all but a handful of them until 1978, when a campaign called the Coal Employment Project took legal action to force the mines to hire women. For the women, high wages were the main attraction. A lot of these women are single heads of household. In fact, in the beginning, an uh, extremely high proportion were single uh, women who were raising kids on their own and you can make about three times as much money working one shift in the mines as you can be in a waitress or working in a, in a, in a factory, uh, sewing the hip pockets on a hundred dozen pair of hip pockets on blue jeans in a day just to make minimum wage. Uh, but a lot of the women, once they got the jobs, 
started saying, hey, you know, the money was the thing that got us there to begin with, but you couldn't get me to do anything else now. Because all of a sudden, instead of being in a, in a sewing factory with bosses standing over you with a stopwatch and having a 10-minute break in the morning and a 10-minute break in the afternoon and total control over their work lives, all of a sudden they were in a man's world, so to speak, with union in, in most cases there to protect them, and they felt like they had a lot more control over their lives. And they said that uh, even if the money was the same, that the, they wouldn't go back to what they'd been doing before. The Harris Mine is one of many hidden in the backwoods of the Appalachian Mountains. The land is owned by the big mining companies. For the isolated communities dotted around the forest, there's no other employment. Here, coal is king. Mines dominate these valleys, overshadowing the miners' houses. By American standards, life here is hard, and it's getting harder. Unemployment this year has gone up to well over 20 percent, twice the national average. Signs of the depression in America's mining industry are obvious. Behind the houses, wagons loaded with coal stand in the sidings waiting for customers. What mining jobs remain are jealously guarded. So for the women wanting a share of the work, there's been little encouragement from the men. When I first went to mines, I was scared. Uh, you're going to get proposition that's only normal. It's in every business there is. Uh, you get proposition and this and that, uh, little slide, you know, remarks and stuff. And uh, I got used to it. Like they said, just ignore them. Like uh, when I first started working in the mines, my first boss was a he was a Christian man. He was a preacher. And he said, Judy, the, these men, they cuss and carry on. They always have, you know, they're not going to change because of you, which I don't feel that's right. They did it a long time before I was there. I don't want them to change just because I was there. I can block them out. But um, like he said, just don't pay any attention to them. If they get out of hand, just walk away from them which I did, and then I got to the point where you know, it wasn't bad, but then you get a few smart Alex, and you just tell them like it was, and they leave you alone. So I just start to get, you know, I just tell them, hey, you know, that's enough. The bosses didn't want to work me because of their wives. The wives didn't like the men working with women, period. And they gave me a real rough time. I think if another woman got hired right now, my husband said they wouldn't have a bit of trouble like I did. But they put me through pure hell for six months. They kept me in every water hole they could find, every dirty job they could find, and everything trying to make me quit, and I wouldn't. The more they pushed, the harder I tried to stay. And I finally stuck it out. They wouldn't include me in anything. They didn't even want me sitting in a dinner hall with them. But uh, they got out of that because I wouldn't leave. One of the main superstitions is women in the mines. They're afraid there's going to be a disaster. That's one of the oldest ones. And they just don't want women working underground because they, it's just one of the old superstitions that's been there since mines ever started. That's always been their belief. Women have never worked in the coal mine. And for one thing, in West Virginia especially, we are on what they call a Bible Belt. What I mean by that is it's very, very religious around here. And women have always had to stay home and take care of the kids, take care of the house. But uh, I think everything's falling into place because uh, one of the men from our district said it's just going to take time and patience. And they will eventually accept women, which I think they've They've come a long ways in eight years that I've been there, really, from the time I started till now. Hey, Jimmy, I did that one. I did that one, big boy. I've done that one. Huh? Put your pump back on. Wait a minute. There you go, Joe. Hold right there, Joe. I might can get that, buddy. 
Hey, Jerk. Leave it alone, buddy. Well, at first, there, you know, there's no doubt that uh, women in the coal mines, when they first went in, was taboo. There was, I don't think there was uh, too many men at all that liked the idea. It was something that with uh, the coal miners years ago, that a woman was not to be in a coal mine. It was uh, bad luck. And they totally disliked it. And he, even today, you know, I'd have to say that there's a lot of men that still disliked it, like it and still have the old views that the woman should not be in a coal mine. Uh, a lot of the younger men turning over, it's, uh, it's, it's accepted, that's the way it is, and they, they think very little about it. And as time goes on and the older generation leaves and the newer generation comes in, it'll be something that'll be accepted completely. But uh, it was something that was very hard to accept for men, you know, very hard and some of the older ones still haven't accepted it completely yet. They said, okay, that's the way it is, but actually deep down inside, no, they, have, you know, they haven't totally accepted it. In some mines, sexual harassment by the men has led to court action. At one, a peephole was drilled into the women's bathhouse. At the Harris mine, where eight women work alongside 800 men, any problems they had at first now seem to have been overcome. Harris is a drift mine, entered not by a shaft, but by a railway which runs for three miles under the mountain. The mine was opened by the Eastern Coal Corporation of Boston in the 1960s. It produces two million tons of coal a year for power stations. Unlike many mines where women work, it's not gassy and it has a good safety record. Although women have worked here since 1975, the train that takes them underground is still known by its traditional name, a man trip. is where the money is. And why work someplace for eight or 10 hours a day, they do around here for what I'm making one day, 90 cents, a dollar, 10 or whatever it is, whatever minimum wages, that's all I ever get around here. And I make something like 80, $90 a day. 
and put in my eight hours and come home, and then I still got my weekends, other than the weekends we work. So I still got Saturday nights and all day Sundays. And most of the time, we're laying around having cookouts. <laughs> but uh, women, they got to make up their minds they're going to work. Because it's not fair for the men, for the women to go in there and expect them to do the work for them. I never did it, and I never asked for any of them's help. Unless I absolutely have to have it. I don't ask them for nothing. Eva Williams and her husband Danny are both minors. They have two children, Melissa, age nine, and Daniel, who's 10. The children were much younger when Eva first went down the mine, and with both parents working, the family needed outside help. Well, my little girl was uh, about two and a half, three years old, and my little boy, he's four. It was rough trying to keep a babysitter, and I think I went through about 15 babysitters, you know, because they want to, you know, they don't treat their other people's kids the way they do their own, you know. They want to mistreat them. I've had them to mistreat my little girl bad. My little boy, he started in school, so he didn't have to stay one, with one as much as my little girl did. But it was rough when they was little like that, trying to keep babysitter. And right now, my main problem is school, you know, trying to get them to do their homework. Right now, they want to lie, you know, about their homework. I guess all kids are like it, but I think mine's worse than others. Are. They like the money <laughs> because, you know, on payday night, you know, here they come, Mommy, how much did you make? They like that. They don't like the part, um, me not being with them. Uh, when they're in school, I, I get to see them on the weekend, that's it. Because I work evening shift and they go to school, I get to see them on the weekend. We have plenty of love um, with the kids. They, you know, I reckon at least uh, 10 times a day, you know, we say we love each other. We have that. Even though we're not together that much, we have our love for each other. I'm missing a part of their life, you know, that I, a part that I'll never be able to to regain, you know. No. But along with the rewards of work at the coalface has also come the risk. Miner Clell Phillips lives near another Appalachian mine, McClure, where this summer, disaster struck. His wife, Kat, also a miner, was caught along with six men in an underground explosion. And when I come back, when I come back, the, the car wasn't here. And uh, I, got in, I went in, and no sooner I got in, the telephone rang. Said she was trapped. I went down there just this face. Uh, There's a girl come off the mountain there and took, took me down there, and then. That's about all I'm going to say. Paint. Kat, 51, with five children and five grandchildren, was well known as the first woman miner in Virginia. Tragically, she was also the first to die in a mining disaster. You know, you never dream of anything like this happening. And, uh, but then that night, uh, about, it's almost 12 o'clock, when the telephone rang, which the accident had happened at 10.15. Uh, my brother had called me. Some of his friends had stopped by his house and told him that there'd been an accident at the mines. And so he went on to the mines. And uh, when he got there, he found out that Mom was in it. So uh, he called us, and then we came straight on down to the mines. So when we got to the mines, uh, they were letting the families all go up and uh, they knew who was in there, and really, I think at that time, they knowed 
that they were dead, but they just didn't say anything they wanted to be for sure. And uh, so uh, when we got in the office, I guess, maybe about 2 o'clock, they came out and told us that they had recovered all the bodies and that all of them were dead. And uh, which they didn't even have to, you know, say names or anything. All the people there knew who was on the on that uh, crew, and uh, so we just left after that, and it was uh, it was terrible because as we was leaving, other families were coming in, and then they had to tell it all over again, you know, that that everybody was dead, and uh, then we uh, left from there to go tell my brother Mike, and he was. We met him on the road. He was coming down to the mines. He had heard there had been an explosion, too. And uh, when we told him, you know, he he's no, it can't be true. And he went on to the mines. He went back to the mines and stayed until, you know, after they had brought everybody out and everything. And uh, it was... We all just were uh, numb because, uh, you know, we couldn't believe that it happened to our mom. Cat was a real symbol, not only for this community, but for women miners and people throughout the country. Uh, there, there was something special about her, and it's hard to describe in words. Uh, but uh, her death has really had an impact, and the death of the men who died with her has really had an impact uh, on the folks in this community and on women miners throughout this country. I think the resolve that's coming out of it is clearly we don't want Kat's death to have been in vain, like nobody ever wants any death to have been in vain. Uh, and I think that the resolve of the women miners is that we are going to make this a safer industry for men and women of all races.